this. This is um, some plastic from a, a, a plastic bag. So I'll just cut a bit off the end of the plastic bag. Put a, a strip of double-sided tape. Okay, so there we are, two arrows. So uh, with this battery, this is the battery that I'm, I'm constantly using at the moment, but yeah, obviously you can tell which is the positive because it's got um, a battery charger on at the moment. Um, so this is the positive, that's the negative. But this battery, um, hopefully you will agree with me, maybe not. Um, it's not easy to tell just by looking which is positive and which is negative. Um, so there is my arrow. I've cleaned this area off so that it sticks hopefully and just peel the back off the double sided tape. and put my arrow on there. So uh, let me know, do you think it's a good idea? Am I missing something obvious? Um, to me the idea is that it just means that if, if in an emergency situation um, where you tend to be in a bit of a panic, uh, if, you're, if you really need to um, change a battery over or fix the terminal it's handy to know instantly which is the positive and therefore which is the negative side of the battery and I guess maybe some people might say well just put a blob of paint on or something um, but the thing with this is I can actually feel the arrow so even in the dark I would know which is the positive terminal. This is just part of the um, the fitting out of the navigation station. Uh, so I just need to get this uh, bit of wood cut. I'll show you it when it goes in. What I'm doing here, I'm just setting up um, a straight piece of wood which is going to act as a guide for when I cut. Hopefully you can see this, I can't see a thing because it's bright sunshine, which I'm not complaining about. Uh, but there's a line here, that's where I need to cut. I know that the, the distance between the, the guide on the, the cutter and the line is 32 millimeters, so I've just measured 32 millimeters in from the line. I've got a piece of straight wood and then I can, I can cut it. So this is um, starboard side of the boat. This is going to be the navigation station. I've got my two batteries here temporarily and they're clamped in or fixed in so that they can't move at the moment. Um, so this is the board that I was cutting and that's pretty good fit. 
there's a bit of a gap up here, but uh, that's fine. I'm going to fix this in place so I can actually fill that gap. So as I mentioned it, this is the, uh, the navigation station, the side that you couldn't see just then. There's the switches, a couple of instruments there. There's the batteries. And I know the wiring looks uh, like a rat's nest, um, but I'm leaving it like that until I know everything works and then I will tidy it up. And uh, for the previous uh, bit of video, I had the camera stuck outside the window there. A bit precarious. But I didn't lose the camera, still got it. So I thought I'd um, varnish this piece of wood. Um, this is the, the bit of wood for the navigation station. Uh, not really sure about varnishing. It's not something I've done a lot of before. Um, and this this is old varnish. It's been uh, it came with the boat, um, and it. It looked a bit like jelly when I opened it up. I've given it a stir and the instructions say to thin it um, by about 10% with white spirit. So that's what I've done.
So because I've been doing the varnishing, it's limiting what I can actually do in the boat. Um, two things, one, I don't want to get more dust on the varnish than, than I have to. Um, I know they're not going to be a perfect job, but still I want them to look reasonably good. Um, and the other reason is because I've got the, the stuff in the boat. Um, I'm limited as to where, where I can work in the boat uh, without touching the, the wet varnish, uh, sitting in it, standing in it. So uh, I've got my varnishing done. It's time for breakfast. <laughs> Breakfast. Uh, okay, so um, bilge pump. That's be fixed into the, the lowest part of the bilge, which is just here. There's a. There's, you might not be able to see it on camera, but there's a little tiny like a, an inch a one inch step down um, now <coughs> I've got to put the float switch in and the float switch has got to be fixed in as well and wired in um, this pump is already connected up to this hose and the hose leads to a, um, a through hole fitting above the water line on the port side. So there we are, it's a bit closer up, um, as close as I can get the camera anyway. So bilge pump and then I've got this is the, the float switch, which is going to have to sit here somewhere. If there's room, I think if it can sit there. But if it sits there, I think I will have to. It will have to be um, stuck in place with glass fiber, I think. Um, and resin because I don't particularly want to drill downwards uh, then I've got um, a junction box this junction box here and that is going to have to sit up here which I will try and show you where that is uh, so this is the junction box so this will 
to sit up here. There is a hole conveniently here so I can mount it on there. Um, and I don't mind drilling another hole if I need to. And then the wiring from here will lead up to um, the switch box that I was uh, making in the previous episode. So that's all the wiring in place now. Um, that's the box there fitted. Uh, actually, put the top on. One thing I still need to do is to um, just seal in the ends of these glands before I tighten them up. I need to put a bit of extra sealant in. Um, and the float switch, I haven't fixed the float switch in yet, but it will go down there. And just to prove it all works, I've got the, the switch switched on into the number one position, which goes through the uh, build float switch. So if I just move this now, So it <coughs> just do that again. Not switching off now. Bugger. So I think the float switch is working. It it does it does switch uh, the pump on and off. Uh, I'm just a little bit worried it might be a bit suspect. So it has made me think it needs. I need to, to fix it in so it is replaceable. So I think what I will do is I will um, epoxy in a piece of wood and then screw the float switch onto the piece of wood. Um, I also need to figure out a way of just strapping the, this hose or something just to hold the, the bilge pump into position uh, but everything else is is pretty much okay and works so if you remember that this is the little box that I made in the previous episode so position one that is the um, I guess you'd call it standby mode so uh, the power is going to the float switch and then position two is bypassing the float switch and then and sending power directly to the bilge pump. So a normal position that you'd leave the boat in would be like that. Uh, so this is the other end of the bilge pump hose. So this is the where, where any water in the bilge will be pumped out of the boat. This is on the, the port side. Um, I was going to fit a um, like a non-return valve, an inline valve, but I don't know whether I ought to fit a manual shut-off valve or not. Um, I don't know if anybody's got any thoughts on that. Uh, so, uh, just going to time just tidy up a little bit um, again please excuse the rat's nest of wires
Um, they will be tidied up. Eventually, as they say. Uh, that one moved a little bit. Uh, just time to get the the ladder fixed back in place. So I can go and buy something for my tea. So we're at the, the navigation station, as I keep calling it. Uh, this is my... Varnished board. Just getting fixed in place. So while the, the, the hatch top that I varnished before breakfast is still drying, it'll take 12 hours. So whilst that's been doing, I've just been putting on some trim here, uh, just around the inside of the, the hatch opening. And this trim, this is basically uh, the outside, the handrail that I took off, the old handrail. Um, I trimmed off the edge of the handrail so that I ended up with some nice clean pieces of wood uh, and these are the bits that I trimmed off so I've just turned them the other way and it's just to tidy up the inside of the hatch opening So once I've got all this done, I'll give this a quick sand down and then this will get varnished as well. I've been messing about with uh, how I want this area to be designed. Um, and then I couldn't find a piece of plywood the right size. Bear in mind, I'm trying to use well, having to use scraps of, of plywood. Um, and finally, because it's the end of the day, I found a piece of plywood which will serve really well as uh, a chart table. Um, I'm going to cut it down a little bit so it's not quite uh, sticking out as far as it is. Um, and then I'll have to put in a little bit of wood across there. I still don't know what I'm going to do with the this what was going to be a secondary bilge pump outlet. This is the, the backboard that I was varnishing earlier. I've now got this is my fan control, which does work. And that's just a variable speed uh, fan control and currently it's just going to operate on one fan the other switch um, I'll connect it up to another fan that will be an extractor fan for the um, uh, compost toilet uh, there we go so that's another Another week over, a uh, bit of a mixed bag. Uh, I've 
quite pleased with some of the things that I've managed to do. A um, bit disappointed that I haven't managed to do as much as I wanted to do, and I think that's just a common thing um, that I'm always setting myself too many tasks. Um, so I'm, I'm always setting myself up for disappointment. So that's something I need to change. Um, quite pleased I've got uh, another two or three subscribers on, on my channel. So thanks very much for subscribing. Uh, stick with it. Uh, please, all my subscribers, please do let me know if you want me to do more of a particular type of uh, shop. Uh, if you want me to explain anything uh, more in detail, um, anything that you want me to leave out, um, just any suggestions you've got. In the meantime, my favourite occupation, cooking. So this is how I make beef burgers. Bit of beef mince here. Pepper. Salt. Bit of a mix. That's it. Fry until they're cooked. 